Okay, so did some soldering. Uh, <clears throat> bring my magnifier back in, see if we can show you some of this. So remember where that one uh, on the diode was, and I said I was going to add a little piece of copper. We have done just that. Stuck a little piece of copper wire all the way across. Bedded it in some there. That looks good. And there is that solder joint that was busted. And oops, let's see here. Uh, there we go. There was the one that was broke all out. That's all nice now. There's the other one beside it. It's a little bit, uh, got a little bit of a ring to it. I'm going to resolder that here in a second. I just wanted to show you some progress. Uh, and there was other ones on there. So that's, so that's what it looks like. And I saved that one last solder joint. Well, my blower's not going off. I'll, I'll suffer through one here. But I just go in, and this is the joint right here. And I make sure my tip's clean on my soldering iron. Get a little solder on there for heat flow. Lay it up against the leg itself until I see it start to melt. And then just add a little solder, and we end up with a nice little pretty solder joint. And we know it's bonded because it melted the solder as it goes. Now, these are made with uh, lead-free solder. And lead-free solder is uh, higher temperature than regular leaded solder. This is leaded solder. Uh, and uh, uh, lead-free solder is also more brittle than leaded solder. The, the lead as it does a better job of wetting. And if you've ever messed with lead, you know it's a little bit more malleable. Than, uh, than just the, the regular solder here. So that allow the you know older amps that had leaded solder actually are a little less prone to vibration damage because the lead in the solder is a little more malleable uh, on that joint uh, and it won't break apart and end up being able to wiggle inside the hole. Uh, so that's all we did. We went through and done all those joints. So now, I think, I uh, also uh, seen some, some bad spots on the positive leg. Anywhere there was a big component here, uh, all the caps and everywhere I went through and double checked it looked real good. Like I said, did the fits and a little bit of that. You can bring the board back in. And now we need to... Okay, so the thermal paste on this amp is still nice and liquidy, so it's it's in good shape. It's not super old. You can see they got a bunch on this thermistor here that kind of goes in there for, uh, that's what these two spots are. But we're going to go ahead and get a little bit of thermal paste and just freshen just a little bit. Anytime it gets old and crusty, completely wipe it all off, clean it, and everything else. If it's nice and still, you know, this is a fairly newer amp. If it's nice and still uh, nice and liquidy, just refresh it. We'll go ahead and make this a little better. It just gooped the hell out of it there. transfer that but we'll get like I said just a, that's a little much thermal paste is not there to do the whole heat transfer job um, it's there to help fill all the microscopic voids and make do a better job fill all the irregularities like I said if it's any bit old and crusty looking completely wipe it clean it all off put all fresh and new um, but this one's not a very old amp. And so we'll get that down in there. And 
Yep. You notice this screw right here has the ground for everything. Before you do any testing or anything else, you always want to make sure that screw gets in. Because uh, some amps require the chassis ground to be happy. Not everything, but, uh, you know, just to be able to do it. So I'm not going to put the uh, corner ones in yet. I'm just going to put these two middle ones on the outside. And those two, there's not one that goes there. That's just a hole. But we are going to put the FET screws back in because this will clamp the FETs down to the heat sink so they can't overheat. Uh, you want to do your testing with your FETs clamped to the heat sink because otherwise if you test it they will overheat really quick. They do require their heat sink. So whether that means you got to put clips back on or whatever. Clamp that sucker down. Confirm. I'll put these four in and then we'll hook it up and test it. See if, uh, see if it no longer dies on us here. These uh, coarse threaded screws, I always spin them backwards so I feel them drop down in so I know that they're dropped into the threads that got cut from the factory. Uh, so they go in and don't cross thread. All right, so we're going to be upside down here. Uh, my power leads are over here and my RCA stuff's over here. Uh, we're going to hook up to the ground. The power. Remote turn on. My remote turn on's got a quick disconnect. I got several different ones with different ends, depending on what I need to hook to. I've got like this one that, uh, plugs in there to my end and but then gives me a spade connector for like Rockford Fosgate style amps that need that. Slowly the more amps I work on the uh, more I'm getting my test set up to where it accommodates more and more things and is a little smarter. All right. Turn on my power supply. My remote is uh, through a foot switch. Uh, you always never jump from the power over to here straight to power up these amps to test. You know, you're going to be taking power from your power anyway, but get it through somewhere separate uh, and through either a little toggle switch or a push button is actually better. Toggle switch stays on you and you have to flick it off. Push button while you're holding it to be the remote then you can let off really quick and the, it's the same with the foot switch that I have down uh, at the bottom is I can let off with my foot real quick it's just a cheap old foot switch uh, it's got my little tiny micro switch in it uh, so let's get this stuff out of the way we will see about starting some music up here all right well, Got it powered on. Don't have any audio playing. We've got a speaker hooked up to bridge. It's actually a sub. Uh, make sure we got it. Turn it off here. And low pass. Okay. So we got it on. We're going to send some music to it. 
low volume to start out with because it would just shut off earlier whenever there was anything playing it. Now I'm turning the volume up. It's vibrating the bench. Turn it down a little here. And it's no longer going off, it's playing. So all that vibration damage was what was hurting this poor little amp, keeping it from working. Do not mount your sub or your amps to your speaker box. Get them in a good location. Put rubber grommets in where you're doing it and mount it securely and, and try to keep it as vibration free as possible. Uh, it will kill these amps. Uh, so there it is. That one's fixed. Uh, like I said, I hope you learned a little on testing and testing the pets. I'll try to do that with several amps. Uh, go ahead and kill the music. I don't want to copyright strike. Uh, I'll try to repeat that testing procedure with a bunch of different amps, showing different amp styles to make it a little more clear. Uh, try to show power supplies. You know that these are the FETs, they're labeled Q, these are the diode packs, they're labeled Dyne, these are the outputs. You know, this on this one's a little power supply transformer. Normally it'll be a toroid. Uh, you figure out which is your output and your rail caps and stuff. And I'll try to go over that on all these videos to uh, let people do a little bit better job of troubleshooting their amplifier. Uh, but if you can go through and figure that out, that things like that are bad, I'm going to see about adding some. Uh, some E6000 to these caps there, one little dot there, and then I may find a little uh, like piece of fiberglass rod or something to goop to there and there since these do get warm. I uh, can't just put cheapo plastic or something there, but something to keep that from vibrating quite so much. Uh, just in case, because I probably won't use this amp uh, myself. Uh, somebody else might. Uh, I may put it in my son's Jeep. I don't know. Uh, so, anyway, I uh, hope you learned a little bit. Uh, hope you learned not to mount your amp to the speaker box. That's bad. Bad, 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 bad. And uh, if you did, uh, like and subscribe, I guess, is what everybody on YouTube asks. <laughs> and uh, like I said, I hope you uh, learned something, or I hope this was helpful. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. And thanks for watching, man.